APCO Educational Topic Number 11, Intrapartum Care. Meet Lavora Delivewich. She is a Gravita 1 Para 0 at 39 weeks estimated gestational age, and we are going to follow her through the process of a normal labor and delivery. The learning objectives are to differentiate between the signs and symptoms of true and false labor, perform the initial assessment of a laboring patient, describe the four stages of labor and recognize common abnormalities, explain pain management approaches during labor, Describe methods for monitoring the mother and fetus. Describe the steps of a vaginal delivery. List indications for operative delivery. And finally, identify maternal risks specific to delivery in developing countries. Labora is at home, feeling contractions, and she's not sure if she's in true or false labor. What is the definition of labor? Let's check our smart device. The definition of labor requires that two things need to occur. Number one, painful uterine contractions, and number two, cervical dilation. At term, many women will feel spontaneous contractions, which they describe as tightening of the uterus. If they are not causing cervical dilation, then they are referred to as Braxton Hicks contractions. Labora is on the phone with her OB provider, and she's trying to decide whether she should come in to be evaluated on labor and delivery. What does the OB provider recommend? Come in if you have leakage of fluid, bleeding, painful contractions every five minutes for one hour, or decrease in fetal movements. Labora's contractions are every five minutes, and they have been for one hour, so she and her partner head to labor and delivery. In triage, Labora's prenatal records will be reviewed, and a focused history will be performed. Let's review the assessments unique to pregnancy and labor and delivery. We need to assess both maternal and fetal status. Fetal heart tones are usually assessed with a fetal heart monitor. We also need to know fetal presentation, whether the fetus is vertex or breech, assessed with either an abdominal ultrasound or by exam. Since we need to assess whether Labora is in labor, we need to perform a sterile vaginal examination. We describe three components from this exam. We assess the cervical dilation, the effacement, and the fetal station. We'll first discuss cervical dilation and effacement. Here is the uterus and the cervix with the internal os and the external os. The cervix will dilate and this refers to the opening of the internal os. Complete dilation is 10 centimeters. The cervix will also undergo effacement, which means that it will thin out or the distance between the internal os and the external os marked by this green arrow will become zero. A non-effaced cervix is about four centimeters. This green dotted line shows a cervix that is about 50% thinned out or will be about two centimeters. And this pink dotted line shows a completely effaced cervix that is zero centimeters thick. Moving on to fetal station. Station describes the fetal presenting part, usually the vertex, in relation to the ischial spines, which are palpable vaginally. When the presenting part is at the level of the ischial spines, it is zero station. As the vertex descends down the pelvis, the station passes plus one, plus two, all the way to plus five. These divisions represent centimeters below the ischial spines. On the other hand, a minus one station would meet the vertex was still one centimeter above the ischial spine, minus two station would be two centimeters above, etc. Labora is found to be five centimeters dilated, 80% effaced, and zero station. So she is now admitted to labor and delivery. We describe four stages of labor. The first stage of labor is from the onset of labor to full cervical dilation. Stage 1 is further divided into the latent phase and the active phase. Labora is already past the latent phase, which includes from cervical dilation to about 4 centimeters and can be variable in length. The active phase starts at about 4 centimeters dilation and there should be more rapid and predictable cervical dilation. The latent phase can last for days, whereas the cervix should dilate at approximately 1.2 to 1.5 centimeters per hour in the active phase. Stage 2 is from complete dilation to delivery of the infant. Stage 3 is from delivery of the infant to delivery of the placenta. Stage 4 is the immediate postpartum period of approximately 2 hours after delivery of the placenta. Labora is in the active phase of stage 1 of labor. Walking is generally more comfortable than laying supine. There is decreased GI peristalsis, so patients should limit their solid food intake, for this can lead to nausea and vomiting. Fetal well-being is monitored during labor by measurement of the fetal heart tone, which can be done by either electronic fetal monitoring or intermittent auscultation. An external tocometer is used to assess uterine activity. Labor would like for us to start discussing pain management options during labor. Labor results in severe pain for most women. During stage one of labor, pain results from the contractions of the uterus and dilation of the cervix, resulting in visceral pain at the levels of T10 to L1. As labor progresses, the fetal head distends the lower birth canal and perineum, resulting in somatic pain transmitted through S2 to S4. 
Some patients tolerate the pain of labor and delivery without any need for medications. For women who opt for pain relief during labor, we have many safe, effective methods. The epidural block is the most effective form of intrapartum pain relief in the United States. Local anesthetic or narcotics are infused through a catheter into the epidural space. This lasts during labor and delivery and can be individually titrated. IV opioids and opioid agonists and antagonists can also be used. However, since they are systemically administered, the primary mechanism of pain relief is via sedation. Labora is now completely dilated at 10 centimeters and is now in stage 2 of labor. How long do women push once they are completely dilated? For women who have not had a vaginal delivery, pushing usually takes about 2 to 3 hours. The length is shorter if the woman has not received an epidural. If a woman has already had one vaginal delivery, the second stage may be very short and she may not need to push for very long. Since this is Labora's first delivery, she will likely need to push for 2 to 3 hours. As a student, you may stay in the room to help with this pushing part of stage 2. Delivery of the fetus is imminent when a half dollar size amount of the fetal vertex is visible in between pushes. As the fetus crowns, it is helpful to support the perineum and facilitate extension of the head. After delivery of the head, there is restitution. Then there is delivery of the anterior shoulder. Then the delivery of the posterior shoulder. The optimum place for baby after delivery is skin to skin on the maternal chest. Next, we'll move on to stage three. Active management of the third stage of labor decreases the risk of postpartum hemorrhage. This involves fundal massage, gentle core traction, and administration of IV or IM oxytocin. The placenta can take up to 30 minutes to deliver. There are two classic signs that the placenta is separating from the uterus. One, a gush of blood, and two, lengthening of the umbilical cord. After the placenta delivers, the uterus should be palpated to ensure that it is firm and has contracted, and the placenta should be visually examined to make sure it has been completely removed. Moving now to operative deliveries. Operative deliveries are accomplished by applying direct traction to the fetal skull with forceps, or by applying traction to the fetal scalp with a vacuum extractor. The incidence of operative vaginal delivery in the United States is estimated to be approximately 3.5%. The general indications are 1. Prolonged or arrested second stage, number 2. Suspicion of immediate or potential fetal compromise, and number 3. Shortening of the second stage for maternal benefit. Our journey onto labor and delivery with our patient Labora has assumed that we are in a high resource setting. In low resource settings, there are a multitude of risks of labor and delivery and 99% of maternal deaths occur in developing countries. Every day, 800 women die from preventable causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. This is the equivalent of two jumbo jets daily. More than half of these deaths occur in sub-Saharan Africa, and another one-third occur in Southeast Asia. The highest risk is for adolescent girls. The major complications that account for 75% of maternal deaths are bleeding, infection, high blood pressure, complications from delivery, and unsafe abortion. This concludes the APCO video on intrapartum care. We have reviewed normal labor and delivery, operative deliveries, and maternal risks specific to developing countries.